All right, my friends, here we go with another fantastic rabbit tip. Whoa! <laughs> All right, today we're going to talk about a decorative wall cap. Because sometimes you've got sight walls that need a cap on them, and it's not always as simple as it may appear to put a decorative cap, like a uh, like a precast concrete cap across the top. It, it it sounds really simple, but let's take a look at it, and I'll show you some tricks. All right, so let me share my screen here, and we'll go from there. All right. So <clears throat> here we are in Reddit, and I will get my face right over here. So <clears throat> let's go to our plan view. Okay, so here we are in our little building, and of course the building we're talking about is this little architect's building here. Mm -hmm. And let's suppose that we have a little courtyard on the right side of the building, okay? And so in plan, what I'm going to do is build right over here on the right side of the building, I want a little site wall that will kind of enclose a space so that we could maybe put a patio out there and some furniture and a barbecue and invite all of our friends, okay? So here we go. Let me go to, mm -hmm, I'm gonna put a wall in architecture, I'm gonna go to wall. And the wall I wanna put in, it's got brick on both sides, it's just a site wall, okay? And let's see how tall, we're gonna go, I'm gonna make it, couple feet down from the first floor so it goes all the way down to the foundation and I'm gonna make it eight foot tall okay so here we go let's just put ourselves a little sight wall in here la 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 okay beautiful little sight wall it <clears throat> doesn't matter how long it is this is gonna be our little courtyard outside maybe eventually we'll put a door to get out there but here's what it looks like in 3d okay and we're loving this Oh my goodness, what a beautiful little sight wall. Okay, in fact, I'm gonna make it a tiny bit longer because we want to have more friends and more fun. Okay, so here's our sight wall sitting out here and that's not all that decorative. It's just a monster wall. But here's what I'm talking about. If you were to go about the business of, let me just get up here. If we were to go about the business of editing this wall so that it's more decorative in nature. I'm going to click the wall and up here at the top, I'm going to hit edit profile. And what it does is it gives you these magenta lines that delineate the exterior shape of this wall. And we can edit that exterior shape. So if you wanted to go this way, you can. I'm going to say, all right, we're going to come out a little ways and we're going to go down a little ways and then over, la la la, and then down some more, and out to the edge. So if I trim this, I'm just gonna show you what happens. So you can trim this to change the shape of your wall. When I hit finished, that is our new shape of the wall. Pretty nice. But let's go a little further. Let's just say edit profile, and like right here, <clears throat> I'm gonna pull this down a little bit further. Mm -hmm. So it's like three, eight, woo, who cares what the number is? And then look at this. I'm gonna use this tool here for a fillet. And I'm gonna click on that wall and that wall. And so now I can put a curve on this thing. And I just wanna bring a curve in here. You can set the curve at whatever you want. So here's our fantastic curve wall. Look at that curve. It's our decorative wall, beautiful. Now let's just say we wanted a parapet cap to go along the top of this and come down and over and then down straight and over. We want a parapet cap to go to follow the top of this wall. So what you would do is go make yourself a profile so that we can make a sweep, like a wall sweep to follow the top of this wall. So here's where we go. We go file, wait, let's first, let's find out how wide this wall is. So I'm going to go to our plan view. I'm going to dimension it really fast from face to face, eight inches. Okay, we're working with an eight inch wall here. So when I say file, new, family, we're going to go down in our templates to, wait for it, profile hosted. 
because the object is going to host on the wall. Okay. So when I say open, it gives us, it opens the template for us. And there it is. Okay. This is the template for building any kind of a profile shape that we want to sweep along our wall. And in this case, on top of the wall. So it's like a parapet cap, but it's a decorative one that turns corners and does whatever we want. So here we go. Insertion point is this little corner right here. And what I want to show you, it says host, 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 host on the left. That means that's the side where the wall is. And this other side doesn't have anything because that's like air on that side. And the host face is this line. So let me just go to create a line and I'll show you what we're talking about. If I draw a line up and over eight inches and down, that would be the top of the wall. You see what I'm saying? The face of the wall, the top of the wall, the insertion point is that point right there, the crossing of these two green lines, dashed lines. And this is the host, meaning the wall. So we're set up now to draw in context. But I have to get rid of that wall before we finish. But I'm leaving it there so you can see what we're working with. It helps often to have the exact wall drawn here quickly, but don't forget to get rid of it before you move on. So here we go. Let me move insertion point out of the way. Okay, so here we go. Let's keep it simple. I'm going to go back to create. Here's where we go. Create a line. And what we're doing right now is creating a closed loop. It can't have gaps and it can't have um, stray lines or overlaps. It has to be a closed loop. So let's just say the parapet cap is going to start right here. And I want it to overhang an inch, one inch. And then let's say it goes up a couple inches, two inches. And then I want to find the middle here. So I'm just going to go from the center of my wall up a whatever distance I want. Okay. And I'm going to get rid of that line I used. And now I'm going to pick these. I'm going to hold down control and pick these three lines and mirror them about this center. Boop. So look at that. Let's just say that's our shape. It can be any shape, curves. It could be really crazy. But this is all we're going to use for now. Now, this is a closed loop up here, but I got to get rid of the wall that I drew so that this thing works. So the insertion points right here, tucked under, and it hangs over one inch on the other side of the wall, and it's got a slope top, so rain falls off of it. So this is, we're done, okay? So what I'm going to do is save it onto my desktop. That's probably a bad idea. Here, let me get rid of that old one. <clears throat> okay, we're going to call this one. Um, this is a profile, profile of a decorative uh, wall cap, okay? Whatever. Decorative wall cap profile. I'm going to save it, okay? Now that it's saved, I can come back and edit it and it'll update in the project. But for right now, I'm going to use what I've got. I'm going to load into the project and close it. Now, what just happened is it got loaded into my project as just a profile. It's not a sweep yet. It's about to be a sweep when I make it into one. Now, I'm going to show you the wrong way and then the right way. The wrong way would be to assume that you can use this drop down wall, sweep, sweep. What a great idea. A horizontal wall sweep, that works. And the wall sweep. I'm going to hit edit and I'm going to, it's underneath my face here. There we go. I'm going to duplicate this one and call this one. This is a decor, how do you spell it? Decorative wall um, cap. C-A-P cap. Okay. It's a decorative wall cap. The profile that we're going to use is decorative wall cap. The one that we loaded. Okay. The material that we're going to use is precast concrete. That works for me. I'm going to say, okay. Okay. Now, let me just move my face back over here. Now, when I want to put this decorative wall cap on, you'll notice that it's, it could snap down here. It could snap down on this one, but it's not really doing what I want. See what it's doing? It's just going in on one little tiny segment up there. It's not following the wall. And that's the problem with just using a typical wall sweep. They are either vertical 
or horizontal, period. And I understand that, but you can't get it to follow this curve if you do that. We could, look, uh, I'm serious, look. I'm gonna put, I'll put one right there, okay? Look at that, goes right inside the wall. I'm like, no, no. And you could highlight it and grab this little dot and pull it back. I mean, that's nice and all, so it doesn't cram into there, but, but what if I wanted a vertical one here, okay? Um, let's say, I'm gonna highlight, create similar, and let's put a vertical one right there. That's nice and all, but it's kind of going the wrong direction. Okay, so basically, this is not the tool to use for what we want. So I'm gonna delete these, okay? That is not where we're going. Okay, so if you have a decorative wall, if it's sloped even, this sweep will not attach to it. It only works on typical things, like a typical horizontal wall that's just straight. If you wanted to follow this wall, you do the following, okay? We're gonna make a family, watch this, I'm gonna go to architecture, on the, when you hover over component, there's a drop down. You click that drop down. We're going to model in place the parapet cap. Okay. I'm going to click on it, model in place. And it wants us to pick a category. And because this is attached to a wall, I'm going to go ahead and put it in that category. So I'm going to highlight walls. I'm going to hit OK. And now it wants to, me to give it a name for what this thing is. And this is going to be the Dexor decorative wall cap, okay? And you'll notice the whole model, it ghosts because we are working in context right now. We can't delete anything, move anything, change anything with the model. The only thing we can do is add our sweep that we want to add. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to click on the sweep tool right here, sweep. We'd like to add a sweep, okay? And we don't want to sketch the path. We want to pick the path. With me? Look at this. Pick path. It's You actually are picking 3D edges when you do this. So our path is going to be across the top right here, down this vertical, follow the curve, cross the top there, down a little bit more, and then across the top of that. That's our path. We were able to pick the 3D surfaces that we want. And when I check the box, it moves on to the next step. It wants to know what profile we're using. If we didn't make one a minute ago, we could edit, we could actually draw one by clicking this tool, edit profile, and we could draw in our profile. But if we've got a whole bunch of decorative walls on this site, we want to have one preloaded that's always the same so that it, we just use it on this wall. We can also use it on another wall. And if we edit it one time, it'll fix everywhere on site. You with me? Okay. So once you have one loaded, you can use this drop down. This drop down up here, we can click on it, scroll down, there it is. Profile of the decorative wall cap. When I highlight that, this thing is almost ready to go. You'll notice that it popped in perfectly fine. It's got some editing tools here for flipping. I'm going to hit flip. Look what happens. It flips it on the other side of the X or the, uh, the vertical axis Boop. over there. And you can flip it back. You can also change the angle of it, like 45 degrees down. There's how about negative 45 going up. So you can change this thing however you want. But we're going to leave it at zero. This is how we want it. We want to... Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit check the box and show you what happened. Boom! That profile swept right along exactly where we wanted it. Now I can highlight it and over in our properties, I can give it a material. And the material I'm going to give it is precast concrete, just what we wanted. And there she is. That looks gorgeous, right? And if I hit finish model, that's what we're looking at. We've got a decorative cap right on the top. Now, you might say, well, what if I wanted to use that in another way? So check this out. I'm going to pick the wall. I'm going to edit the profile and add something like a big honking circle right there. Okay. 
And when I put a circle on it, it cuts a hole in the wall. It's really, I probably wouldn't do that in real life, but I just want to show you guys how it works. I would like this same sweep to sweep inside this curve. Okay. So what I'm going to do is click on that decorative wall cap and hit the button edit in place because I want to edit it and add to it. I could either click this one and edit it and change the sweep if I wanted to, or I can click on create a new sweep. Okay, pick a path again. And the path, I'm going to pick this, the edges, the top and bottom edge of this circle. Check the box, done. But now it wants a profile. Again, the drop down, we're going to go to profile, decorative, wall cap. And now when we zoom in, it's oriented wrong. This is not how we want it to sweep around this outside. We want it tucked under. So let's figure out if I flip it, it goes down. Okay, that's good. But now I want to rotate it underneath. So let's see if I go minus 90, what happens? Yes, good guess, Mike. Okay, it rotated underneath and it looks like it's in the right orientation. So if I check the box for finish, Look at that, but wait, not done. Going to give it precast concrete material. And bam. Are you kidding me? Look at that, people. I'm going to just let you marvel at this. Anyway, I think that's all that we need to do right now. I just wanted to show you guys, you don't have to use the stock tools that came in Revit. Go ahead and experiment. Use this, um, build a, what I, what I did was I built a, I modeled in place the decorative wall cap for this wall, and it doesn't matter the shape this thing goes. I can follow it wherever I want with this sweep. All right. I hope that was a, a, an enlightening new way to work on things on your project. It is powerful to have a few more tools in your um, toolbox when you go to work in Revit. And so if this is, um, if this works for you, then just um, write me a comment if you want to underneath the, in the, in the, under this video. But if you have questions, be sure to ask them down under this video. And I will do my best to answer your questions as quickly as possible. All right. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and happy reveting. Thanks. Bye-bye.